welcome to Simply Clouded. Today we will perform a small lab. This lab is designed around BigQuery and we will learn how to create a data set, how to create sample tables. We'll also upload some sample data to BigQuery, try to query it. If you think my speed is very slow, you can always run the video in 1.5x, but I'm going to keep it slow for a generic purpose so that everyone can be with me. But in this video, we will first see what is BigQuery. We will understand the basic terms quickly, and then we'll try to form some steps, and then we'll see if we are able to grasp what the actual purpose of BigQuery is. I will also speak a little bit of Hindi in the middle, but I'll try to keep my English audience covered. So I'll explain everything in both languages, not completely, but I'll try to keep up. So first, BigQuery is a flagship GCP product. It's a very famous product and it has tons of purposes. GCP BigQuery, what does it actually do? So BigQuery is a fully managed, fully managed means you do not have to take care about the underlying infrastructure. You just have to pay for it and use it. Big data tool for companies that need a cloud-based interactive query service. So the key here is EA query service. So if you are a data analytics engineer or you have data query, karna hai, you have to query massive data sets, BigQuery is the tool for you. BigQuery is not a database, it's a query service. So that corroborates what I just said. It supports SQL queries. So for all my database administrator friends who are already familiar with SQL, BigQuery is the tool for you. And you can easily get a job where uh, BigQuery is in demand because SQL is supported by BigQuery. It can be accessed from console, CLI, or SDK. So BigQuery also supports API calls. So you can use APIs, your applications, ke code, ke API ke calls in integrate kar sakte hai, jo BigQuery ke call out. Kar. So you can query billions of rows. It only takes seconds to write and seconds to return. So BigQuery has a very fast response time. We'll check it. In our lab data. You can use its REST APIs to get your work done by sending a JSON. So, I have said that REST APIs use your applications in the query interface, integrate your data ko as a data source. And Let's understand with the help of an example. Suppose you are a data analyst and you need to analyze tons of data. I will give a simple example that if you are, uh, let's say, analyzing flight records for an airline. So, Number of flights that run every day, what are the timings, what are the sources, what are the destinations, how many airports are operational, what are the hours, what is the staff, what is the support numbers. What are data on Jaiga will be daily basis pay and traditional MySQL usko handle nahi kar paega. You will need to have an infrastructure in place and you will need. So this is a fully managed solution. So it takes that effort out of the window. You can focus on analysis rather than working on Basically. So designing the infrastructure itself will be a difficult task, but in BigQuery, you can actually select the processing speed, the RAM size, the CPU, underlying architecture, you can select the specifications. BigQuery is mainly for big data. You shouldn't confuse it with OLTP, which is transactional processing. For example, banking system. Transactional processing means that one transaction starts and finishes. Analytics is basically more about analyzing the data and creating trends out of it, creating reports, dashboards. And you know other kinds of information. This particular uh, tutorial may aapko the terms aayenge. Ek pehla hoga data set. Data set is a combination of tables. So you to organize sets of data or tables of data to logical groupings. Data set term used hota hai. Tables. I think agar apne IT ka thoda bhi basic pada hai, to rows and columns, cell structure, tables se aap familiar. So like any other database, BigQuery also has tables. And then there are jobs. So you patch load or query chalao, ya bahut sara processing karo data. Ka. Uh, everything is submitted in GCP, Google Cloud as a job. So you can track it, track the progress of it, analyze the logs in case if it fails, analyze the errors if it throws out one. So that's what jobs are. Okay. I hope the theory is clear to you. Otherwise, before going to this lab, I'd say go and research what big queries and let's now jump into the lab. So what are the high level steps that we will do as part of this lab? The first is, of course, we log into the GCP console. You can always create a free tier account. It will give you GCP. Google Cloud will give you $300 worth of free credit. Plus, you get minimally charged for each SQL query or each table or whatever data you store. So I'm sure 
thousands of queries can be written before you exhaust your free data limit. So you can always go ahead and try it out. We'll query, we'll create a simple BigQuery data set, then we'll create a table, then we'll load data to an external CS. The data sources in uh, BigQuery GCP can be multiple. It can be Excel files, it can be events from a messaging broker like Kafka or PubSub. There are n number of data sources or types of data that is possible. In our case, we have chosen a simple CSV and I will show you the CSV as well. And then we have reading data through the table using SQL query. So once we load the data in, I will also show you how we query the data. Now let's jump to the console and let's start creating our stuff. So this is the GCP console. This is how it looks like. You can search for whatever service you want to work on from the search engine or from the left side. I'll go to the big query straight away. I will pause out the parts where it is taking a lot of time, guys. So this is my project. So project is the first level of encapsulation in GC and project is where it starts from. The first thing I will do is I will click on these three dots here. Of course, you can try everything out with CLI and GCP gives well-versed commands to do that. I am doing it through console for easy understanding. I'm going to create a data set. So I have to give it a data set ID. I will call it simply clouded BQ data set. So I'm going to promote it using my name and underscores, and then I'm going to create it. You see the data set takes hardly a second to create and it automatically appears here. So let's say you have multiple test dev prod environments, or if you have different layers of data, a stage layer, a raw layer, a pre-landing layer, and then a final part layer, um, data sets are really handy there. Uh, because you can control the access on data set level. So if you want to give, an, give a user access to a particular data set, but hide the other data sets, that is completely possible. So if you click on the three dots here, you will see a share. Based on whom you give access to, you can always control granular access to a data set. Okay. Let's move on and let's create a table. We'll create an empty table, but we'll up load the data and then we will select a file. I have created a sample data. Once we load the data in, you'll know what the data has, but let me just meanwhile at the back end, open the file and show you what the data really has. It has details of a particular user. So it has simple username, email IDs, age and serial IDs. It's the simplest form of data. Of course, more complicated data can be handled by BigQuery but this is the most easy data for this demo purpose. So we are going for a table name now. I will give the table name as user underscore details. It's a native table and schema will be auto detect. So you can also create your own schema. What really is schema? So if I tell my Google BigQuery table to have three string fields, two number fields, one long number field, one integer field. So when I tell a basic blueprint of my table to BigQuery, that is called a schema. Here I am telling BigQuery to just detect the schema automatically from my file. Now, if I click on create table, it is supposed to create table. More advanced part of these tutorials will have partitioning cluster information. For now, we'll just let the default values stay. And I'll just click on create. Table. I will pause the recording while the table gets key. Welcome back guys. So the table has been created. If you see this schema matches the file that I showed you. So the table schema has been updated. The simple way to see the data is if you click on preview, of course, for large data sets, preview will only show you the first thousand records. It will not show you more than that. And in that case, the only option you have to read the data is to query the data. For now, you see that there are 10 rows here. Each row has the details of a user with the user ID, username, email, age, serial ID. So that's how you create a table. Now, let's say I have been tasked to filter out all those users who are above the age of 32. Of course, 
I can always look at the preview and see what the data is, but the more efficient way is to run a SQL query. Okay. So first of all, I would need my project ID. So BigQuery runs a hierarchical query where it first wants to check your project ID. It first wants to check your project ID. Let's just copy this entire query and build it. So BigQuery has a very cool feature. If you submit an incorrect query on the top end where it is written type of query to get started, it will throw you an error right away. So it continuously analyzes processes and debugs your query for errors. So if I paste it here, it is going to throw me an error that project ID is not valid. Now what I'll do is I'll go to the project and click the copy the project. I'll paste this, which is student. Now it is looking for a data set. So I'm not, I'm going to replace this with labs with simply clouded. See, now the query is validated, which means the query will run. What my query is doing it, it is just selecting username from the entire table where age is greater than 30. If I run this, it is going to give me just those users whose age is above 30. What if I want to see their age as well? What if I want to see all the details? I would just replace the username with star. So now what I'm telling is select everything from this table where age is greater than 30. So if I run this, I will see the entire details, but the age will all be greater than 30. You can also save your queries run them later. You can also schedule your queries. So let's say if you want to run a certain query to delete or purge records uh, before a certain timestamp, or if you have any such requirement to purge record, delete records, transform records, transfer them from one table to the other, or n number of SQL queries, they can be scheduled using basic cron jobs and basic functionalities. So that's the basic of Google BigQuery using data sets and tables. What we learned so far was we created a BigQuery data set. We created a table, loaded the data through CSV format. Again, I'm saying multiple formats are possible and you have to read the data from the table using C. Try the simple tutorial in your own GCP environments, comment or email me if you have any issues. And if you want to sign up for a Google Cloud course with me, just reach out to me on the email. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe for more such videos at Simply Clouded. To subscribe our channel, please hit the bell icon at the bottom.